That's right. No, I'm not. I mean, you're not going to come in here demanding money from me. How would you like? Customers usually go through several stages when they hear that their item's not as valuable as they thought. The first is disbelief, followed by denial, anger, and even assault. In this video, we see a woman who assaults a security guard, another insults and body shames Ashley, and one almost takes a swing at Wes. The thing all these people have in common is that they were shocked at the real value of their item. Yes, ma'am. I was coming to buy my rent because I have to pay my rent. It was due a couple weeks ago. Oh, okay. Why you keep looking at my ring like that is real? I mean, what, you want the studs on my lip or something? Pawning it. I'm not buying it. You're just pawning it. You want to pawn it? I keep control of yourself. I don't know. He's lucky. My security staff didn't. There's never a shortage of people who don't know their item is fake. The truth makes this woman explode at less, but she never stands a chance because less has backup. Hi. Hi. I'm Ashley. I'm Nana. Nana. Mm -hmm. I called up here and I got an estimated price and they told me that I could get 400 for these. You, you called up here and got an estimated price? Yeah. Who did you talk to? Nicole. Nicole. Over the phone? Yes, ma'am. But we don't see them over the phone. She is lying. Where Nikki at? Nikki. Nikki. Nicole. Well, which is it? Nicole or Nikki? Listen, it's real diamonds. All I know is I need my 400. All right. I'm looking at the diamonds, and I know right off the bat the weight is just not going to make it. I know I am not going to be able to help her. I can do 185. No, I'm not. I mean, you're not going to come in here demanding money from me. Yeah, because that's what I called for. Nikki! What? No, Nikki! What? She all of a sudden darted away from me, started screaming for Nikki. It was like a bat out of hell. What is a customer comes in to pawn her jewelry, but she's not ready for what Ashley has to say about it. Um, excuse me. Nikki! First of all, you're not going to scream in my store. Well, first of all, you're not going to no. come either. This is Nikki. And, and they told me that they were going to give me $400. Oh, so look at this. And now they because... telling me that I got money and I need it. Now, don't you know that? I need my money no. right now. I don't know what this chick was talking about. She was very confused. But I know one thing for certain. Nana needed to go go. You like that? Well, you disrespected me in my store. And you okay. Everybody in this y'all. Y'all. OK, have a good day. And kiss me. Keep walking. Bye. Nana. <laughs> A headache. Nana's smart enough to leave before security throws her out, but she makes sure that she's got the last word. Hi. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm well. I'm here today. I want to power my computer. I'm trying to get my son into a technical high school. I know it's ugly, but it's no, I didn't say it was ugly. How much are you looking to get? Um, like 175. Oh, that that's not enough. I, I, I really wish you could give me like 150. Have you ever had an impact before? Yeah, I'm a, a gold card member. You can get it for you for the same amount that you've had it in for. What was that? Do you consider the fact that I've been patronizing this business since 97? Uh, I really appreciate you not giving me what I want. I, well, I don't give I everybody what they want. want. It's seven. No, I'm not done. Okay. Do you want the hundred? No, no I don't. Okay, then goodbye. This customer walks in with a laptop and a price that just won't cut it. Ashley knows this one's going to have to go. What do you mean goodbye? You can walk out the store. I can. Am I going to walk out? You will. Who's going to make me? Who? I want to see somebody make me leave up out of this giving me what I want. I, well, I don't give I everybody what they want. 50. Well, if you have As something. As a patron for, that's been patron you, since 97. Done. No, I'm not done. Who? I want to see somebody make me leave up out of this. Are you a lady or are you a child? I don't give what I am. And don't, oh. don't think that you won't. Because all I got to do is make a phone call. You know what? Wait. Get out. I'm not get getting out, out of here. Get, get out. Me up. out. Don't touch me. Touch me. I've been patronizing this business since 97. You have an English degree, right? No, I don't. Yeah. Despite Ashley's efforts to help her, the woman goes ballistic. Felix, the security guard, escorts the woman out, but she doesn't go quietly. Um, I was coming in to try and get, like, 1500 for this. OK. I'm trying to get my baby daddy out of jail, and I've been really trying to work things out with us. I love him dearly. I was his first phone call, you know, so I, that lets me know that he loves me. Huh? No, not 50 bucks. I want 1500 for I these. I can't help you with that. I okay. said. I don't care what you said. I said hey, I want 1500 I'm not giving you $1,500. 1500 I am not no, giving you. To get my man out, OK? I want 1500 What part of that you ain't understanding? No, don't give me no damn hug. Oh, you need a hug. I Get off of me. Day, I don't want no help, no. Huh? 
The woman comes in to trade baseball cards. However, the only thing she manages to do was initiate a shouting match with Ashley. This one is put out the door fast. How are you? I'm doing okay. What can I help you with? Either trying to get a loan on it or you guys can buy it. Mm -hmm. Trying to sell it for maybe like 150. It's 50 bucks. This thing you calls way more than this. Okay, but I'm not gonna pay you for the amount that you think it's worth because it's stained. This is not one of the newer ones. This is not this season. I know about purses. But you still willing to buy for $50, though. So if it wasn't worth, why would you even say $50? So they didn't say it was all. Can I talk store. to somebody nope. else? Why do I have to talk to you? Because you disrespectful. I'm, I'm disrespectful. You call me a pepperoni. You're not the owner. The owner is the other man. You, you must have. How you get here? To the top. Customers are just shocked when they're told the real value of their item. But this customer's just straight up disrespectful. <laughs> How much you want to spend? Oh, I got 70 bucks. I've seen them from 70 to 80 dollars at other pawn shops. Yeah, with two games. But as long as you like. Does it come with a warranty? It comes with an as-is warranty. Need a PlayStation? I saw them for 100 bucks. What you gonna do? I don't know. The PlayStation's really hot stuff at the moment, but the customer who wants one is far from hot. He's mostly just hot-headed. I ain't been shot already. What? Ain't nothing here. You're just another door guy to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Throw it down. They're on 70 bucks. I ain't. Whoa, oh, you don't have it. Oh. Have a good day. Have a good day. Hey, what you think? What you mean? What, what is all that about? What is all that about? Yeah. No, this is my <laughs> level. Beat your ass down here. Go <laughs> Do it right here. You bitch. They're not real. What? No, these is real. Look, when you hold up to the light, bing, you hear that? Bing, that's the diamond sound. Don't you think I would offer you money for them? No, I know what this is. Why are you, your big ass standing here? What the f you want? So you can give me my $300. Oh, my Whatever, told me my ass haters. Bye. Have a nice day. One the next customer is a lady with diamonds from her fiance, or so she thinks. Les breaks the bad news to the lady, but she's got a hard time accepting the facts. Hello. Hi. Can I help you? If I'm trying to pawn this. 35 millimeter, right? Yeah. How much are you looking for? Just about $30. I've got my baby's birthday coming up. I just need a couple of extra dollars to help out. Stuff situated for him. What do you have planned? For his birthday? Mm -hmm. A birthday party, you know, cake, ice cream. To try and get money from us. And the kid ratted her out saying, yeah, my birthday's in two months. There's a little bit of time you have for them to come back and hopefully have something of value. And I really would have appreciated any little thing that you could have gave me. 10 years ago. This is some bull because y'all could have took this camera. You could have gave me $30. The innocence of a child didn't allow this woman to cash in on her worthless camera. She was pretty shocked her lies didn't work on Zeth. Hi, how are you? How are you today? Good. What you got? Uh, my bracelet. Hmm. My baby daddy gave it to me. It would be so mad. Curtain tiebacks. What are you telling me? You know this isn't real. What do you mean it's not real? Well, it's it's a real bracelet. You know what? It's, it's a real bracelet. Listen, you're okay, about. fine. You're Fair probably enough. right. Don't trip, okay? okay? Don't trip. I'm about to call them right now. Sometimes people get presents, and sometimes when they get their presents, the people that give it to them tell them a lie. He said Where this bracelet it? costs $500. It was what the more are you talking about? He's lying to you. Baby, did you give me some fake gold? Did you give me some fake gold? Really? Did you give me fake gold? This ain't love, baby. You said you was gonna marry me one day. <sighs> OK. Have a very nice day. Thank you. Man, this What the is you talking about have a nice day? I have a nice day okay, when you then give don't me some have nice a... service. Right? You know what, y'all. I'm about to take it to a real jewelry store that knows something. That's what I'm going to do. The amount of men who give their women fake jewelry in Detroit is absolutely crazy. This woman is shocked, betrayed, and angry when she learns the real value of her jewelry. Hey, I was wondering what you could get me on a loan for the PS3. We're on a mission now. 
real mission <laughs> to get my brother out of jail. All of a sudden, the cop just stopped us because one of our lights are off in the back of our brain. Bonus 300, I got 150, and now I'm here, ended up with his brother trying to sell his video game system on his games and the controller. See what we could do with that. 100. 95, I suppose I get to 100 for you. 100, mama. I can't. 100. I normally would have given $80 on this game unit. I went $15 over, and that wasn't even good enough. But too bad I couldn't help her out because I wanted to help her, but I hope she can find the money. Two customers come into the pawn shop on a noble mission of freedom. However, Ashley lets them down easily, but at least they take it better than most customers in this video. Pawn shop because we, you know, is in need of money. And we're trying to pawn this uh, VCR and this TV. Shut okay, would you um, put it on there like that? Of course, people, you ain't seen no income. And you wouldn't, you know, well, uh, you know, where's the saying. income? Do you want to do that? You so and what? You I was ready for them to have a full-out brawl out there. Get your ass on somewhere. No, get your uh, ass on hockey ass. I tell all the ladies up. and everything. Can I help you guys? Why are you guys fighting? I kicked uh, this. Right, what he said, you know, it was, it was offensive. Yeah, it was pretty good for TV. Sell it. Yeah, Actually, yeah we go pawn this. No, the TV didn't get dry. Twenty. It worked. Twenty dollars. All right, twenty. Agree. Twenty will work. Hey, you can each get ten. Oh, you agree now? All right, just give it to this gentleman. We're gonna do this for twenty. Just go online, get your ticket, and get your cash. This is a general conversation. Okay, well, um, she you still, you still, we still in a relationship, though. Tiffany, seriously, maybe you should go in the parking lot and face for him. You're right. I am gonna ring the parking lot. Parking's really pretty. I like this. A chaotic couple barely makes it to the pawn shop before smashing one of their items in an argument. The couple is more sad than shocked that they've rendered their items worthless. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how about yourself? Doing all right. I've got a, a ring I want you to take a look at for okay. me. You know what it is? They're diamonds. They're not diamonds. That's cubic zirconium and silver. Okay. Not interesting. I know what I know what this is. I'm telling you, I can't give you any money for it. I know it has value, and I'm just I'm really, really upset right now. Upset. I've worked for an attorney. I know my rights. Don't touch me. Why would I not give her money if it was worth it? I thought you were smiling when she was doing that. This woman can't believe her diamonds are actually not diamonds. If you like seeing angry senior citizens, then this grandma's got you covered like a quilt. So, um, I'm here to sell my yays and stuff. Okay. Party years. I paid 5300 For these? Yeah, I overpaid. Uh-huh. They are fashion designer glasses. Really cool gold diamonds. For those particular frames, there is a huge demand, but not for that price. How much you want for these? The little as I'll take probably like 44. All right, give me 35. You give me 35? 1,000. What you mean? You, you making too much money now. I sell this stuff cheap, man. Look, I ain't pay a thousand for these. You I know feel you me? I can feel you. Well, dang, you don't feel that? me. You know what I mean? I can feel you. You see how he's talking? I'm talking like a kid and shit. You don't know who the fuck I was. You don't know where the fuck I was raised. Like and you're I just said, talking. You well, flat out, man. I ain't leaving, dog. Come on, baby. You unbuck. Let's go, baby. No, we out. Even on that petty shit, dog. That petty ass money you offering. That's why ain't nobody fing with y'all. You feel me? I feel you. Les is offered a cool pair of glasses, but he knows they're not cool enough to be worth what the customer's asking. The customer doesn't take the news well at all. Welcome to the channel, guys. Okay. Oh my God. Get, get your hands off. Blurry face guy. We'll buy this and pawn this and that and give you 350 total. Get set for a crazy moment in this pawn shop. The shopkeeper and a customer are going at it in a big argument, trying to make a deal or who knows what. But wait for it. Out of the blue, two dudes in fancy clothes with blurry faces bust in like old school detectives. The shopkeeper scratching his head, clueless, but here's the kicker. Those blurry face guys are undercover detectives on a secret mission. It's like a scene straight out of a comedy movie. The detectives have arrived. I need to tell them what's been happening and show them the evidence. 
hold on to your laughter because this is pure comedy chaos. The second those detectives waltz in, the shopkeeper's freaking out like he's been caught selling magical beans or who knows what. These detectives are all business, channeling serious Sherlock vibes after an espresso overdose. They're tearing through the shop like treasure hunters on a caffeine high, checking random stuff and maybe on the hunt for hidden treasures. Meanwhile, the poor shopkeeper's sweating bullets, desperately trying to keep his cool. It's like a real-life comedy suspense show unfolding before your eyes. Get ready for the wild ride of the century. These detectives, giving their best modern-day Sherlock and Watson vibes, decide to ramp up the drama with technology. It resembles they're on an investigator show marathon watch as they jump into the security camera film. As they replay quick forward and focus on each problematic little hiding spot in the shop, envision some strong, thrilling music playing behind the scenes. An investigator story with an innovative turn will keep you as eager and anxious as ever. Do you think he was working with someone else? If he was, it could be anyone. Well, buckle up for the big reveal. The digital detectives uncover the mastermind. And guess who? It's our buddy Joe. Yep, good old Joe is the culprit behind all the missing stuff. These detectives don't waste a second. They slap handcuffs on Joe quicker than you can say guilty as charged. And just like that, the pawn shop transforms from a place of heated arguments to a full-blown crime scene. The shopkeeper, still in shock, watches as Joe gets escorted away by the police, handcuffs and all. The whole situation is so bonkers it can make anyone burst into laughter. It's like a comedy show with mix-ups, detectives with blurry faces, and a surprise twist. You'd be left thinking, did that seriously just happen? It's pure comedy gold, my friend. Comedy gold. A massive fraud. This one will truly astound you, so hold on to your chairs. The largest swindle to ever occur on the show, so far as people are aware, left everyone perplexed and alarmed. Basically, the boys said that someone from the shop had conned them. She pawned two of our laptops, and she told us she was going to give us the money and the laptop. To make a long story short, a woman pawned two of their laptops and then informed them that she knew someone who worked at the pawn shop and would give them the money in the laptops. You pawned something? Yes, yeah, she has the ticket. When did you pawn it? Today. 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 The males are left with nothing because she has their laptops, the money, and even the ticket to their belongings. Get you at the back door, so you'd end up with the laptops and the money? Yes. It astonished Ashley and Seth as much as it shocked Les. This girl told you one of my guys would meet you at the back door, so you'd end up with the laptop. Les or anybody else was unable to stop it now. Les then thought of a strategy, though. If you can find out which one of my employees, you give me the guy's name, I'll give you the computer. At that point, the youngster had a glimmer of optimism and left, believing that perhaps they could apprehend the employee. Well, let me tell you something. We've been scammed before, and I will not be scammed again. Les then requested that Ashley look up the buyer of each laptop they had that day on their background. Les realized something had clicked when she spent the entire day going through them and finding nothing. You're able to witness it. You'll get the money and the laptops. You go, hell yes, let's do it. Thus, these children were not the victims themselves. Instead, they had been attempting to con them all along. Well, here's the way it works. Nobody gets out of pawn without paying for it, and nothing goes out the back door. This time, they weren't duped either, although the kids did cause Ashley and the others a lot of worry during the day. The Bag Imagine this super funny video with a lady who's basically playing the I'm lost in a bag shop game at a crowded mall. So there's this awesome comedian pretending to be her, right? She strolls in like she just landed from Mars, completely clueless. Yeah, okay, I went to get my purse back to make my payment. Then, out of the blue, she locks eyes with a black bag, and boom, she's convinced it's her long-lost twin, with a mix of determination and total confusion. That's my purse right there. That one right there is the black one. So I want to know why it's out there. She marches over to the lady in charge, ready to solve the mystery of the twin bags. It's like a comedy treasure hunt in a bag store, and you're in for a hilarious ride. Get ready to laugh your socks off. Here's the money. I want the purse. That bag was never in pawn. Now get this, the shopkeeper, a comedic genius with timing that's spot on, coolly spills the beans. She says, hey, this bag's not yours. But oh no, our lady on a mission won't back down. That's not your purse. How do you know it's not my purse? Because that purse has been out there. Let me see it. With this epic confidence, she declares, no way, this bag and I go way back. They're like childhood buddies. And here's the best part. You wanna buy it? 
I just want to look at it and make sure it's not mine. She throws down the ultimate challenge. Bet you this bag, if it's not mine, I'll hand it over. But trust me, it's practically family. It's like a comedy duel in a bag shop, and you won't believe how hilarious it gets. Oh my god! Get, get your hands on me. Meet Cam, the scene stealer of the century. Picture this, chaos in the bag shop, and here comes Cam, our superhero security guard. He's like, hold my coffee, and smoothly escorts the determined bag enthusiast off the counter. Have a nice day. Let's go. Oh, Walk yourself out, you. Walk you. Yourself but wait, she's clinging to her bag like it's a ticket to a comedy show. The laughs hit the roof as Cam keeps his poker face while chaos reigns. This video's a comedy roller coaster. And Cam, the unsung hero, it's a laugh out loud male adventure that you don't want to miss. Sign of free cash. I was trying to find out because your sign is saying that I can get 30 days. In the pawn shop sitcom, the worker dazzles the customer with the prospect of a 30 day cash fiesta. The seller, with a classic, how can I help you line, unwittingly opens the door to financial freedom hilarity. It's a tale of interest free loans, dollar storage fees, and a comedy of errors that promises 30 days of pawn shop shenanigans. But that's not what the f y'all saying is saying. It's misreading. It. No, it's you're your misreading. Problem. The customer attempts a 30 day free cash caper, armed with a misinterpreted sign. The seller, caught on the crossfire, insists it's an interest-free loan bonanza, not a free cash party. Cue the comedic chaos as the customer points fingers, and the pawn shop sign becomes the unintentional star of a sitcom episode gone haywire. I need my cash! It says it right here! Free cash! The customer demands free cash like a rock star on tour. The seller, armed with the reality of interest-free loans, faces a barrage of demands. The customer, teetering on the edge of pawn pandemonium, enlists a surprise ally, a sassy woman who jumps in the scene like a comedy superhero. Cue the applause for this unexpected twist in the cash crusade. In the side-splitting aftermath, the pawn shop saga spills into the parking lot, where the customer and seller engage in a hilariously awkward brawl. Amidst a flurry of ass cracks and elbows, the spectacle unfolds, leaving the bystanders in stitches. The door slams and the customer vows a dramatic return with an unforgettable I'll be back exit line. Comedy gold in the pawn shop arena. Antique computers. Got some equipment here. Yeah. Maybe we need some money, we're going the out west. In the pawn shop time machine, two hunters strut in with ancient computer relics. The seller, bewildered by their outdated tech, questions if they're stuck in the 80s. The hunters, claiming they've wiped out all of Michigan's deer, aim for a whopping $900. So how much are you looking for? About $900. The price tag triggers more shock than a retro computer's boot-up sound. Um, what I can offer you is zero. Zero. Comedy sequel, the hunters scoff at the initial offer of zero dollars for their ancient artifacts. The hunters, expecting treasure, get a lesson in antique appraisal, leaving the shop echoing with laughter and zero-dollar dreams. You and you. Thank Wonderful. you so much. Yeah. You do. In the aftermath of the failed computer barter, the hunters drop to an $800 offer, met with a swift and resounding zero from the pawn shop. ZZ Top, mistaken for Detroit's antique appraisers, exits empty-handed. The seller consoles himself with a printer sacrifice to the dumpster gods. I thought it was you, man. Oh, that's good. Ending the scene with a comedic crash and a touch of musical confusion. Plump man. In hardcore pawn, Les Gold faces off with a cheerful plump customer aiming to sell a watch for his wife's anniversary. Les, ever witty, discovers it's their anniversary too. The old man deadpans 25 years, prompting Les to hilariously inquire, how many happy years, man? Laughter ensues in this pawn shop comedy. Too bad the shopkeeper shuts it down quicker than a bad punchline, not willing to spend a dime on what he thinks is a phony watch. Talk about a comedy of errors in the pawn shop. It's fake, I'm not interested. In <laughs> Give me a, let me see what you got in watches and take. Now brace yourself for the ultimate comedy meltdown. Our plum seller cranks up the chaos meter, throwing wild threats about the shopkeeper's wife and claiming he's seen her somewhere. You're married, right? I am. 
This triggers the shopkeeper, turning the whole scene into a chaotic carnival. There's two things you don't talk about. What's that? My wife and my family. In the blink of an eye, security guards swoop in, snatch our hefty hero, and give him the grand exit, escorting him out like the star of an unexpected sitcom. Guess what? Our main guy, kicked out of the shop like a party crasher, hits the street with a style only he can pull off. It's like a comedy buffet that'll have you grinning like you just discovered the ultimate joke. Get ready for hilarious adventure. Need help? video, there's this super hyper dude who charges into a shop, making a fuss like it's the biggest emergency. And get this, he decides a random table is his new chill zone. No rules, no worries, just pure wackiness. Get ready to laugh your socks off. Get a load of this to hit the road. But guess what? He's on a whole different planet. Watches. Get ready to giggle. So there's this new lady in the shop who's decided to be a rebel. She goes all sneaky and puts the shop's watches up for sale online without telling confidently struts away, leaving the staff scratching their heads like, did that just happen? It's a hilarious roller coaster and you won't stop laughing. You weren't as big of a bitch. I was wrong. Excuse me? Get the Get set to lol. This funny video is like a crazy ride with surprises, silliness, and a hint of madness that'll have you laughing without a pause. The twists and turns make it a hilarious and chaotic experience for anyone lucky enough to catch the shop's wild antics. Brace yourself for a good laugh as you watch the madness unfold in the side-splitting comedy script style video. What did she say? That I am the bitch. Get the f out of here. Penny Pincher. Get ready to chuckle. This hilarious video is all about a super energetic girl trying to convince her super penny pincher dad to hire more security for their shop. She's all passionate like, dad, we need extra protection. But oh boy, her dad's like, nah, that's just throwing money away. Adding an extra night security guard is an expense we don't need. Dad, I just don't understand. The funniest part? When the argument gets so wild, the girl pretends to be super angry and storms out of the room. It's silly, it's amusing, and you'll be laughing your socks off at their crazy fight. Every single time I have an idea and I bring it to your attention, he then has to walk in. Hold on to your funny bone. This comedy video is pure chaos when the staff walks out and surprise, the roof is missing. Peel the roof off? The, yeah, they peeled the roof off. Yep, someone peeled it away like a giant banana. Imagine the team head scratching in disbelief. Their shop literally got unroofed. The alarm company called. They thought it was a false alarm. Is anything missing? I have no idea. I have now, here comes the kicker. They start worrying it might be a sneaky robbery. Cue the panic as they sprint to check the CCTV, hoping to catch the audacious roof peeler in action. Get ready for a laughter packed roller coaster as they dive into this hilarious investigation. Get ready to laugh in this super funny video. Oh, thank God. Two guys. So they get through the internet room, jump in. The staff at a quirky shop freaks out when they find out someone peeled off the roof for a supposed robbery. Total chaos, right? So they go all detective and check the CCTV footage. But wait for it. Turns out not one, not two, but three guys break in. And here's the kicker. Looks like they grab yeah, the coat right coat. there and then out. So these guys could have been part of a three-man team. One of them ends up hiding inside the fridge. It's like a comedy show gone wild, leaving the staff scratching their heads and everyone else in stitches. You won't believe the crazy twist in this comical caper. Stop. We got broken into last night. Took a fur coat and ran out. I told you that security should have been here at night. Stolen microphone. The seller, baffled, asked when they were taken off the rack. It's a funny scene of concert chaos turned into a pawn shop jackpot where microphones become rock star souvenirs and the friend is the accidental hero of the day. Uh, how are you doing? Got picked up from a uh, concert last night. The person insists the microphones were flung into the concert crowd, a spontaneous catch. The seller, eyebrows raised, gets an unexpected call from American Jewelry about missing microphones. It's a classic mix-up where concert souvenirs turn into an unintentional pawn shop investigation leaving everyone wondering how the microphones took an unexpected detour. I'm from American Jewelry. I have a gentleman down here. A mad girlfriend. Welcome to the whirlwind of pawn shop hilarity. Our unsuspecting star walks in, aiming for a ring appraisal and potential pawn deal. 
Little did they know, they were about to join the ranks of pawn shop legends in a tale of marital madness. I wanted to get it appraised, see how much it might be worth. Okay. Hold on to your hat. Drama unfolds as accusations of ring napping soar, plunging the spouse into an emotional roller coaster over the disappearance of their precious bling. The tension is so palpable, you could carve it with a jeweler's precision. Okay, when I give you an appraisal, that's not how much I'm going to give you in pawn. Okay. But hold on, our hero clarifies, I'm here for an appraisal, not to pawn. Hugh gasps in the realization that pawn shop language got lost in translation. The spouse is in disbelief, and we can almost hear dramatic music building up in the background. He wanted uh, an appraisal on this ring. Plot twist, the ring allegedly transformed into bike parts? Is this a pawn shop or a two-wheeled saga? Accusations fly faster than a speeding bike, plunging us into a marital showdown. Why'd you take my ring? Echoes through the pawn shop halls. Why'd you take my ring? Well, I wanted to see how much it was worth. Our hero is left flabbergasted, caught in the crossfire of accusations and domestic mayhem. I just wanted to know its worth, they exclaim, trying to defuse the explosive situation. But alas, emotions rage on. Yesterday, you said you needed bike parts and didn't have the damn money. And all of a sudden, you got my damn ring. Unexpectedly, a wild punch appears. The spouse transforms from the drama unfolds. They assert their right to park, no matter the odds. Suddenly, I'm patiently telling you, dude, park your spouse house. Meanwhile, our hero, undeterred, asserts, I'm not going nowhere, as if the van god themselves had bestowed upon them a divine parking mission. A shocking turn of events, our hero literally stops, drops, and rolls on the store carpet, leaving everyone perplexed. The guy in the refrigerator. In this episode of Hardcore Pond, we are taken to the time when a crazy man entered the shop, and when no one was looking, he took refuge in the refrigerator for reasons unknown. Thankfully, this man had spotted the crazy man and went to Ashley and others to let them know. At first, no one would believe him, but by the looks, he looked quite genuine, so they followed him up to the spot where the fridge was. Still hardly believing the man, they went to open the fridge, and boom! The man was curled up inside, about to make the refrigerator its new cozy little home. Uh, I don't know what y'all doing over here. There's some mother in the refrigerator. What? The whole situation was so absurd that not a single person in the whole shop could believe that there was a whole person hiding inside there. Good thing that they have security in the shop, so the man got what he deserved. What the f*** are you doing? Fake earrings. Two sassy black queens strut into the pawn shop, flaunting earrings worth $350. The seller, bewildered, questions their cash craving. They snap back. How you doing? Good. I'm here to pawn these earrings. Okay. Honey, our financial drama is an Oscar-winning secret. The seller innocently inquires about the swearing, prompting the girl to unleash a verbal firework. Trying to get $350 for him. Why do you need uh, the money? It's none of your business why I need the money. As he fumbles to record the chaos, he realizes these queens can turn from pawn shop patrons to drama divas faster than his slowest sale. Talk about a speedy emotional roller coaster. Why are you swearing? Because you're asking me why I'm coming in here to handle my business. In the midst of the jewelry saga, it's a linguistic roller coaster. The seller's ears are bombarded with jewelry. Loan me my money and a kid eating crisis. What does my sign say? Jewelry and loan. This jewelry, loan me my money. I got to feed my kids. The drama unfolds faster than a soap opera, leaving him nervously counting non-existent diamonds. Talk about a pawn shop sitcom. Man, you getting on my nerves, dog. How'd you get You ain't even looked at my Do you know that these aren't real? In the sizzling pawn shop showdown, the women insist their earrings are as real as their sass. The seller, sweating in the La Cote, tries to diplomatically handle the diva duo. It's a battle of bling, attitude, and a heat wave, all under the watchful eye of leather-clad thermometers. Comedy gold. How the f you gonna tell me just by looking at my that they not real? They're not real. As the queen of sass declares her exit, she throws shade like confetti. Insults rain down, targeting the seller's wrinkled up hair and questionable fashion choices. With a parting shot about a jury and long bow ass, she exits, leaving the pawn shop in stitches and the seller questioning his life choices. Coloring book. Ashley enters confidently, challenging authority. Seth tries to manage the chaos. Tension rises as they clash, leaving everyone puzzled. Don't come in here thinking that you know 
everything in here. Like, I didn't know you anything. should go off and like run back to Hawaii we bought that shirt. Unearthed gems, a JFK coloring book from 62, and a Frank Zappa one from 82. Mom's surprise drawer is found. Now, the shop's in for a laugh, unraveling the tale behind these quirky relics. Hello. Hello. I have a John F. Kennedy coloring book from 1962 and a... Laugh out loud scene as the seller confesses to buying a Frank Zappa coloring book at 25, never cracking it open. Now, with three daughters in college, it's a hilarious quest for cash. The quirky relics become the center stage for a funny exchange in the pawn shop. So, why do you want to get rid of it since you love him so much? Well, I have three daughters in college and I need money. The negotiation dance continues as the seller justifies prices, leaving room for haggling. Tension rises comically as the buyer feels snapped at. The shopkeeper offers a research break, declaring, I'm not in a hurry, in this pawn shop sitcom starring quirky characters. Okay, do you want to give me some time to do a little research sure. on this? Yeah, or all the time you need. I'm not, I'm not in a hurry. The plot thickens as Ashley discovers the price coloring book online for $8.75, triggering a hilarious spat. I didn't see any of that. Can you read that? Eight dollars and seventy-five cents. So make me an offer. Zero. She hilariously expresses her dismay, accusing the customer of rushing and shoving a phone in her face. I'm looking at the one that he wanted fifty dollars on, and I pull it off, and it says eight dollars and seventy-five cents. The bickering ensues, with both claiming they're not married, adding an amusing layer to the pawn shop sitcom. I have to take it off this guy. That's how much he pissed me off. In the ongoing pawn shop drama, Ashley delivers a sassy retort to the customer, suggesting he adds value nowhere and jokes about returning to Hawaii. The banter continues as another worker calls out Ashley for being rude. I think you're disgusting and rude. I didn't say any of that to you. Can you read that? $8.75. Leading to a comical exchange where Ashley dismisses them to focus on yourself. The workplace comedy unfolds with quirky characters and witty comebacks. Parking lot. Cue the workplace alarm. The notorious parking lot gambler is back, and the office crew is on high alert. With a battle cry of "Let's go get him!" They embark on a mission to catch the elusive man of many lands, or as they dub him, that lady Pakistan. Office drama just hit the jackpot. What gambling again in the parking lot? Meet Robert Robertson, the maestro of sports memorabilia, introducing himself to Dennis in a pawn shop saga. The plot thickens as he unveils a treasure trove of Detroit Lions autographs salvaged from his sister's basement flood. Forget superheroes, this guy's heroics involve rescuing signatures during a union picket line water ballot. Alright, this is Robert. Robert, Robert nice, to Dennis. Dennis. nice to meet, meet you. Nice to meet you, Dennis. Yeah, I got light him here. I might be interested here. In the wild world of pawn shops, Dennis is hit with a first, an NFL labor strike poster. As Robert pitches his union picket line relic, Dennis, caught between fandom and frugality, contemplates the value. It's a negotiation dance where even the poster's wrinkles have a say, and Dennis dreams of a dad who'd splurge on a heartbeat. What, Steve Bacchus? This is the first time a guy actually brought in an NFL labor strike poster. Dennis and Seth, the dynamic pawn shop duo, are advised to step up their deal-closing game. In the battle of signatures, Robert's pitch clashes with Dennis's detective skills. It's a showdown of history versus water stains, where even a tear is more drama than a soap opera. Selling history hard, selling water stain history a comedic challenge. One just like this mint though, and he got nine hundred fifty dollars for it. Right, so if that was mint, why would you want a thousand for this? In this hilarious haggling carnival, the pawn shop pros are on their knees, throwing cash offers at Robert for the water stained NFL labor strike poster. It's a dollar dance off with Dennis and Seth, and they're juggling twenties like it's a comedy club. In the end, it's 520s that win the bid, leaving Robert with a pocket full of paper and the pawn shop crew high-fiving over their historic steal. 75 bucks? No, no way. Offering you just $100 cash money right now wouldn't make it. Gold earrings. In the golden world of earrings, Ashley and the customer embark on a carrot quest. The earrings sparkle, but the price tag dims the shine. The customer eyeing the digits suggests a hilarious plot twist. An exchange proposal that could turn this jewelry journey into a comedic barter ballet. I was looking for some gold earrings. You are in the right department. In the dazzling dance of earrings and dollar signs, the customer flips the script with an exchange proposal. Ashley, the jewelry juggler, contemplates the weight of the situation, hoping those earrings don't tip the scales against her. It's a hilarious jewelry version of Let's Make a Deal, where carrots and comedy collide. Well, what we can do is I can take those 
and apply money towards these. In the Comedy Club of Carrots, Ashley drops the punchline, a whopping $500 for the desired earrings. The customer expecting an exchange extravaganza faces the reality check. Okay, so what I can do for you today, I can apply $40 towards these. I paid $500 for those. What do you mean? You can't do an exchange? Ashley, the weight wizard, spills the carrot beans, revealing that these earrings are more featherweight than a dieting hummingbird. It's a priceless jewelry negotiation that has the audience and the scales in stitches. Okay, I can't give you $500. Why you can't? Because it's not worth. In this comedy climax, the customer unleashes carrot chaos, insisting her earrings are weightlifting champions. The tension escalates as she dubs Ashley boo, but a touch sets off a mini drama. I know how much these cost, boo boo. Because these screams no, that they're right. gonna give you more money, boo boo. The pawn shop becomes a carrot battleground, and Ashley's final offer of $175 is the punchline that sends the customer storming out, leaving the jewelry saga in a carrot cloud of comedy. Everybody else good. Pose made you Fake diamond. In this wild pawn shop showdown, two characters storm in like a tornado, armed with an attorney and a demand for $900. The seller, caught off guard, awkwardly requests a card while the attorney seems more like a background dancer in a chaotic legal dance. It's a scene where negotiations are more like a comedy sketch, leaving everyone wondering if they stumbled into a legal circus. I, I got my lawyer with me. I, th this is wrong. Show me your card. I don't have a card with me. It's my attorney. Customer unveils a questionable earring, claiming it turned his ear into a rainbow. The seller, armed with skepticism and a keen eye, dissects the earring, declaring it a fake diamond disaster. What do you want to do today? You want me Can to I figure get out? Money back? You want me to figure out why your ears turning a different color? Is that a real diamond? Enter the legal cavalry. The customer brandishes a lawyer in the name of mismatched receipts and the ear that turned technicolor. It's a jewelry malfunction turned legal circus, and the pawn shop is now the stage for hilarious gemstone saga. This is not the correct earring for the receipt. Chaos ensues as the customer brandishes a jewelry store receipt like a wizard spell. The attorney, a sidekick in this legal circus, demands a refund for the rebellious earring. The seller, caught in the crossfire, faces threats of escorting and leg knocking, all while insisting they won't budge. It's a legal showdown where the only guarantee is a laugh out loud twist around every shiny corner of the pawn shop arena. The earring does not match the description. What you mean? So you said now I just brought an earring in? The customer, armed with a kaleidoscope ear and a refund demand, insists the seller turn around and walk that butt out the door. The seller, invoking a hint of pawn shop diplomacy, proposes a negotiation dance, but warns, keep your butt back there. Cue the dramatic soundtrack, man, it's a comedy in motion. An evil woman anthem echoing through the pawn shop arena. Get out. Yeah, you know, took my money. You showed me a bold earring. Golden State Warrior Ring. I just got engaged and I heard you had a 75 Golden State Warriors ring and I was thinking that would be perfect for my fiance. This man came into the shop to buy something, which is odd because most people come into the shop to sell something. This man, on the other hand, was interested in Rick's 1975 Golden State Warriors ring, but Rick was unable to but laugh at this. Rocco, will you grab me that ring? Sure. That is a brave man that would give his fiance a championship ring. Even though Rick keeps on laughing, asking why the man is giving a ring like this to his fiance, we understand that the buyer isn't pleased with Rick's antics. So what I did was I brought pictures of another 75 Golden State Warriors ring. The buyer produced photos of another Golden State Warriors ring and attempted to match them, which they did. Then he asked if it was a genuine diamond and if Rick had checked it. Rick told him that the stone was genuine. Perfect. Have you tested the diamond? Oh, yeah, it's a real diamond. It's a real diamond, okay. The buyer then proceeded to use his own tester to determine whether or not the diamond was genuine, as he was a collector and dealer of sports memorabilia himself. But as he went to test the diamond, it didn't pass. It's not a testing. Uh, that's because you have a really cheap tester. So Rick stepped in with his own tester, which of course revealed that the diamond was genuine. Even though Rick was irritated by the whole thing, he chose to be courteous to the man. First fine on mine. Okay. I will uh, trust that. The buyer requested for the amount after the ring had been tested, which Rick believed to be $11,500. The purchaser, on the opposite hand, had a budget of $5,000. Any, any, uh, 11 grand. That's what 11, I can do. That's your bottom line. Yeah. Okay. Best price. 
Because Rick refused to go any lower than $11,000, the buyer was forced to leave the business unhappy and empty-handed. I didn't think he was going to go 5500 but I thought you know he'd work with me a little bit, but it seemed like he wanted to punch me in the face. Wells Fargo safe deposit box. What do we have here? Well, we got a Wells Fargo strong box. This man arrived with a Wells Fargo safe, an antique ball and chain, and a couple ancient handcuffs. The seller was asking roughly $2,000 for everything in the package. All right, well, tell me about these things. This ball and chain right here uh, actually comes from the human prison. It's the oldest prison in the state of Arizona. Folsom Prison was Arizona's oldest prison, and the handcuffs belonged to it since the late 1800s. Here's my concerns. When they forged chains back in the 1800s, it was just hot welding together. At that time, it was all performed by the blacksmith, but the chains that the man brought in were all electronically forged. Not only that, but Rick had another major problem. Never in the history of any prison did they ever have their name put on the balls. What Rick was saying was that everything the man brought in was false, but the seller was not ready to believe Rick. It's fake. What, what makes you an expert on this stuff? I've been buying and selling this stuff my entire life. Even if the contents of the package were phony, there was a chance that the box itself was not. So Rick made a deal for the box and left the rest. Box, I'll give you 400 bucks for it. I want $1,200 for it. No, you don't. <laughs> and the transaction was completed for $400.50. The seller left, and Rick subsequently decided to consult with an expert about what he had purchased. Okay. 19th century strong box, Wells Fargo. Following a thorough examination of the box, the expert asked Rick the following question. First things first, have you already bought this? The box was just as false as the other items Rick did not purchase, and the expert agreed. It's a complete fake. Damn it, Rick. Mystery guy. Here they come again. Hang on to your hats, folks, because we're diving into one wild tale. Picture this, a mysterious dude looking like a secret agent casually strolls into a pawn shop acting like he owns the place. The shopkeeper, eyes wide open, can't help but stare at this walking enigma. I mean, who wouldn't? He's like a riddle on two legs. Now brace yourselves for the craziness escalates. Our mystery guy isn't flying solo. He's got not one, but two ladies in tow a trio causing a ruckus. They swagger up to the counter, and out of nowhere, the guy dramatically declares that the ticket he's waving is faker than a rubber chicken. Everyone in the shop, imaginary files included, gaps in surprise. Here, on the ring, or get the ring back. Here, me, She's got a receipt let me explain right here. To you. This is a counterfeit ticket. Hold on to your giggles, the shopkeeper smelling something fishy turns into a detective. With a sneaky grin, he tells the trio to chill and confidently says, I'll prove it's a fake. The suspense builds as he brings out the real ticket, examining both like he's some ticket art connoisseur. This is the amount of numbers that are here. Okay. Number two is state law mandates. Hold on to your funny bone. The shopkeeper spots the differences quicker than yelling fake alert with a big old grin. He declares, nice try folks, but your ticket is faker than Monopoly money. Cue the imaginary mic drop in the background. But whoa, Nelly, the trio isn't throwing in the towel just yet. They get into an energetic discussion, pointing fingers, thrashing arms, and hollering as though they're contending in a yelling challenge. It resembles something out of a sitcom, and you can't resist the urge to chuckle at the idiocy. In the grand finale, our mysterious guy and his partners in crime admit defeat. Looking a tad embarrassed and probably feeling a smidge silly, they storm out of the pawn shop. The shopkeeper, now a hero in counterfeit ticket detection, is left with a bunch of baffled onlookers. And there you have it, a hilarious adventure that's weirder than fiction and funnier than a clown on a unicycle. Comedy gold, my friends, comedy gold. Gun cabinet. Well, it's a desk, but it's not really a desk. It's actually a gun. So what this woman brought into the pawn store was not anything that was common. It appeared to be nothing more than a plain desk, yet it was far more than that. It's a gun desk. Yes, when you push down on the inkwell, a bullet fires out through the trap door. When you press down on the inkwell, a bullet fires out through the trap door, and this desk transforms into a pistol when the time comes. If I sell it, that's fine. If I don't, I'm okay with that too. 
Thus, the merchant visited the business not exclusively to sell the weapon work area, yet additionally to figure out more about it. She needed to realize who possessed it, the way things were utilized, how old it was, and other such data. I was trying to figure out how to open it and had a really good look inside it and said, you know. While hunting for a nice little desk, she came across this one. But when she got it home and attempted to open it up, that's where she discovered it wasn't what she thought it was. I've seen desks with hidden gun compartments, but I've never seen a desk as a gun. Rick thought it was something out of a James Bond movie, and he was so engrossed in it that he forgot he was actually pushing his face against a gun. Do you mind if I have a buddy look at this thing? Because I am just completely lost here. Not at all. Rick believed it was best to have an expert look at it after taking a closer look, so he called one. Gun. This is the gun. What? <laughs> The master had never seen anything like it and had no clue about what it was utilized for. Yet, in lieu of what he saw, the master reasoned that it was made somewhere in the range of 1890 and 1910, which was an issue. Even though he couldn't guarantee it, the Pawn Stars may buy it in a gray area. Bring it to a gunsmith and have him professionally deactivate the mechanism. Then it can be legal to buy and sell. The only way to buy and sell it legally is to take it to a gunsmith and have him deactivate the mechanism. Only then can it be simply and legally acquired and sold. I wish I could help you out more. It's just one of those things. Thanks for bringing it in. Oh, you're welcome. Orange Bowl Ring. I decided to come to the pawn shop today to sell my Penn State Orange Bowl Ring from 1973. This individual then brought in an Orange Bowl Ring from Penn State in 1973. He was in the shop trying to sell it since he needed the money for upgrading his house. And he reasoned that it must be valued at at least $1,500. Where'd you get this? You know, I went to Penn State and guy down the hall played on the team and uh, he needed some money and I bought it back then. The seller claimed that one of the team members needed some cash and that the only thing he had was that ring. Thus, the man paid him the necessary funds and purchased this ring. You know, it was Jeff Clark. He didn't play too much, but he was an outside linebacker for the team. This particular ring belonged to a linebacker named Jeff Park, who was a member of the squad even though he didn't play much. What are you looking to get out of it? I'd like to get 1500 Okay. Just as he previously stated, the man wanted 1500 but Rick needed to examine the situation more carefully before making any moves to get the ring. It was then that he discovered that the ring had a problem. The price is reasonable, but it's illegal for me to buy or sell anything when any identifying mark has been removed on an item. The ring was cool, but it was also reasonably priced considering that the engraving makes it completely identifiable. It was no longer lawful for Rick to purchase or sell this ring after the engravings were taken out. I'd be more than happy to buy it off you for $1,500. Problem is, it's like buying a car without a VIN number. The seller was a little confused as to how the removal of a few inscriptions might make the ring illegal to purchase or sell. As a result, Rick and Corey had to thoroughly explain everything to him and let him know that despite their best efforts, they're unable to handle it. All right, dude. Okay. Sorry, I couldn't do nothing with it. Okay. I know a thousand and one people I could have sold this ring to and made a night. A fake bill. I have some political memorabilia, the Secret Service ID for J. Howard McGrath, Attorney General of the United States. This individual entered the pawn shop with a $10 bill that had several signatures on it, a White House pass, and several Secret Service IDs. He estimated a thousand figures for each of these items, but before beginning to negotiate, Rick needed to learn more about them. He was the chairman of the Democratic National Committee when Truman ran for president. Rick was prepared to strike a deal after briefly discussing J. Howard McGrath, the Attorney General of the United States, and how influential he was in Washington politics. But there was a small issue. You got some neat stuff here, and these three things right here, I really want to get checked out. Rick checked everything and concluded that not just the dollar that the man had brought in was counterfeit, Rick had to see the expert to find out if he could purchase the other items since he had a hunch that doing so might be illegal. You don't want. A counterfeit bill is not legal to own. The expert said that the White House pass and the Secret Service ID were authentic and acceptable to purchase, but the fake banknote was a different thing. Thanks for coming in, Mark. Not a problem. You're the best. Appreciate it. Alrighty. Now that the expert had left, Rick was prepared to strike a deal. Aside from the fake bill, he asked the vendor what else he wanted. Yeah, I'll give you 500 bucks. Yeah, deal. All right, you want to write them up? Yeah, sure. The vendor left the store with the cash and the unauthorized bill after the trade was completed for $500. Hopefully, he gave the Secret Service the counterfeit bill. Harley Davidson. 
you got any paperwork I can see on it or? Yeah, I got the title, but can we negotiate first or something? I mean. Now, Corey's a seasoned pawnbroker and his spidey senses tingled the moment the seller mentioned paperwork later. It wasn't the gleaming Harley Davidson that raised an eyebrow. It was the seller's insistence on negotiation first, documents on hold. See, Corey's dealt with his fair share of shady characters and a bike like this beauty attracts all sorts. So with a polite but firm smile, Corey politely pushed back. Paperwork, he said, before we talk about the price. Standard procedure. You got any paperwork I can see on it? Or Yeah, I got the title, but can we negotiate first? The seller's eyes flickered ever so slightly, and that was all Corey needed. Something wasn't kosher here. Now, Corey isn't just sharp, he's thorough. Those papers, discrepancies galore. Dates that didn't line up, VIN numbers singing a different tune. So Corey did what any responsible pawnbroker would do. He plugged those details into the good old computer system. What he found sent chills down his spine. Corey knew right then this wasn't just a sale. It was a potential police sting waiting to happen. Sure, the Harley was a head turner, a chrome-plated masterpiece that could make angels weep. But for Corey, business wasn't about shiny toys. It was about integrity, about doing the right thing. And the right thing in this case meant making sure this beauty wasn't a stolen dream, someone else's heartache wrapped in leather and chrome. So with a heavy heart and a clear conscience, Corey had to do what he had to do, walk away from the deal, even if it meant letting that hardly roar out of his life and into the unknown. iPhone. I just got this phone that I bought here like two, three days ago, and this don't work. The bell above the pawn shop door jangled, and in walked a man clutching a sleek black phone. He announced, smooth as silk, that this beauty was a recent purchase, now sadly broken. The camera don't work. It keeps freezing and like that. He claims that it's just too irritating to use because the phone freezes frequently and the camera doesn't function. Download a camera function? No, it clearly got a camera. Why would I have to download it? When it was questioned if he had downloaded the camera feature, he became very irate. If he's telling the truth, then why does this inspection set him off? And why was he even being questioned about getting the download? That isn't how it operates in any case. You got your receipt? No, I ain't got it with me. I ain't bring it. First of all, we don't sell it. We can decide right now whether the client is attempting to misdirect. Rich, the seasoned pawnbroker behind the counter, felt it too. That intuition honed by years of dealing with all sorts, that sixth sense for trouble, it was screaming at him. This wasn't just a customer with a broken phone. It was a game, a play in progress. As soon as you give me that receipt, I can see what I can do for you. I don't have my receipt. I just clearly told you that, man. Clearly you told me that. So clearly I have to tell you to you fix this or... without the receipt, there's nothing I can do for you. Rich yells, are you messing with me, man? You came for a new phone, but you don't have a receipt? However, the man persists in assisting that all he's asking for is another phone. If he said clearly one more time, I was going to clearly have to knock his freaking head off. We're all aware that Rich needs the receipt. You, my man, are not. Who sold the phone to you in the first place? Somebody. Be here. When questioned who exactly had sold him the phone in any case, he quickly pointed at any random employee. We haven't had one of those up for sale since I've been here in six months. We I mean, no I've just seen you in two weeks. Furthermore, it appears that the youngster he pointed at didn't know why he was being called for. Thank you very much. I appreciate Sprint you coming on over here. You can go back to something. Can... All Rich knows is that it's an iPhone, but he's more irritated by something else. What's more, clearly, it was working out. Can you go show him how it works? Uh, take a picture out in the parking lot. Nope. And then, like a burst dam, the story spills out. The phone wasn't his. The purchase was a shady deal in a back alley. The frustration wasn't with the camera. It was with the consequences the cold sweat of a gamble gone wrong. With a sigh, Rich ushers in the man and his broken phone out of the shop. The heavy silence echoing their unspoken pact. The truth had been told, the game was over. That's all for our video. We hope you liked it. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell for more videos like this. Share it with your family and friends. See you next time. Christina stealing money. Here's something curious happening. Les seemed to be very angry over that man. Don't know what that man was doing there and what he had done, which made Les angry. Let's see what will happen. Aunt stole the leftover money. Everyone there is so angry. What is going to happen now? Les is curious as he is sure that Christina cannot do this kind of stuff alone. There must be some other people supporting her in his play. Les is taking it to extremes and asking again and again if there's another one with her. Have you been working with any other employee? No. All Same alone, way. without any knowledge of anybody else stealing from us, correct? 
Oh God, he asked her to send her to jail if she did not speak the truth. Oh my God, things are getting worse. She's not telling anything. Mother-daughter fighting. So there's a woman coming with her daughter. She showed some pieces of bottle and a collection of stamps. According to her, it is worthy, but actually it is not. Les asked her that it is not that worthy. Oops, the mother got angry at Les, because for her, they are worth everything. What will happen now? So what you got? I got some really expensive stuff. Show me. Oh my God, the daughter charged a fire against her mother. Heck, you better down know you, girl, what the hell wrong with you? She triggered her and insulted her for her useless collections and, oh my God, look, they're about to have a deadly fight. Oh God, the mother scratched her daughter. Les is stunned. The mother and daughter are having extreme fighting conditions. Everyone around is watching them. Les is stunned and did not have any idea that this would happen or it might be very casual to them. Okay, the guard has been called. The mother is still beating her daughter well and doesn't want to argue anymore. Both are screaming at each other. The security guard is letting them out. Oh my God, how embarrassing and strange it is to see mother-daughter fighting like that. The security guard gets them out and everyone is laughing at them. Astonished, Les. I had to intervene. Okay, okay. You don't know who the Man threatening Les. So a man entered the pawn shop and headed straight towards Les. Seems like it would be a happy deal with that cool customer. Okay, the man had an anniversary today, and so Les is both are sharing some joys together. Seth and Les's fight. Les and Ashley seem to be discussing some serious stuff. Felt like something serious had happened. Give me a 40,000 square foot free for all back there? That's no policy. What do you think brought us to here, Seth? But Seth is not getting anything. They are having a fight. Home of the shop better than him. Les is stunned. Everyone around is listening and is terrified of what will happen now. It's outdated. I can run this place better. I know exactly what needs to be done. I want the opportunity to run this place. Les is going to take everything very seriously. God knows where that anger will lead both of them to. Les is tailoring Seth that he cannot do anything and without Les, the pawn shop would close. No one can run the shop better than Les, but things are not getting cool. Seth yelled after Les and got out of the cabin. Ashley listening to all this is making fun. God, it is not that serious. Well, Les in his anger was constantly getting furious over that debate. Man got beaten by Les. Well, people, there came a black young boy towards Ashley's counter. Ashley asked him, greetings. So is he here to sell something? So you want to just pawn it, right? Because you want to be able to get it back? Yeah. How much are you looking for? Is this enough to pay rent? Right? Hope so, it will be a good deal for that man, until or unless something happens. He is here to sell the ring of his grandmother who just passed away. Well, a really sad news, but it won't affect the deal because business is always a business. He wants to sell this ring to have some money in order to make some funeral arrangements. Well, whatever the cause is, um, Ashley checked it out and to surprise, it wasn't real. Um, do you have anything else? Because this unfortunately is not real. It is a fake gold, so it can't make money. This statement made the man angry. He started shouting, how strange and creepy it is. He should not react this way. If the ring is not real gold, it is not someone's issue. He should take it out with himself. He started yelling at Ashley, and Ashley is just controlling herself. I need to speak with somebody else because you irritate me flat out. She does not want to create some mess, but he's not stopping. I think he wants to insult himself. It will make things go mad. He is extremely screaming and trying to hit her out. That crazy man is calling death. The guard came who held him up and set him onto the floor. He's trying to beat Ashley and getting over her. Well, the guard is keeping him away. Less is here. Matter is going to be very serious. That man is not understanding the matter, still trying to fight. Guard taking him out of the shop. Less is joined and is getting angry over that man. Less and the guard beat him and get him out. Oh my God, what a fight. That crazy man. 